I've been lucky enough to be able to use human scale chairs as much as I've wanted over the past several years. I'm going to walk through all of their most popular chairs, giving you the good and the bad about each model from a ton of personal experience I've had with each chair. I'm a big fan of human scales design philosophy. I think there are so many positives to their minimalist, mechanism-free mindset, from the environmental benefits to making the chairs easier to use. But I've also found that this mindset does come at a cost. The Different World was a surprising winner for me when I first used it. If any of you are familiar with my sitting preferences, you know that I'm not a fan of mesh seats. But the World has my favorite mesh seat. The mesh has a ton of flex, and the cylinder bounce really makes the chair soft to sit down in. I just really love how bouncy the chair is overall. I also like the design on the front edge, or the lack thereof. Human Scale did something really cool and removed the hard front edge, which is often a problem that plagues chairs with mesh seats, like the Aeron. The world does have plastic sides though, and it's pretty narrow compared to the rest of the chairs that they offer. It's not going to be a great fit if you have a wider frame. Another thing to think about is that the stretchy mesh could be a problem for some people. It may stretch too far, and it could potentially put you into contact with the chair frame. The back on the world is probably my favorite thing about the chair, which will be a common theme with human scale chairs and me going forward in this video. I find the natural curve of the backrest to be just right for my back, and the little amount of wiggle allows me some movement that a normal backrest with a hard frame won't have. I also like the tri-panel mesh design because it contours to my back nicely. You sink into it a bit and then it supports you in that position while you're working. The arms are just okay. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. They have a little softness, but the arms are kind of firm around the edges. They do have three-way adjustment, but the width adjustment and the depth adjustment aren't great. They're just not quite as generous as that height range they give you. I'm not a fan of the recline on the world. It features human scales mechanism free recline, which basically means you do not have any bulky knobs or levers, but you also do not get any locking positions or tension control. I don't mind the lack of locking positions and tension control. It's the motion of the recline that I wish was different. I just don't like the hip thrusty recline a lot of chairs are moving towards. While I don't love the recline motion on the world, it was the noise that the chair makes that ultimately had me searching for another option. Human scale chairs are loud. They creak and they squeak quite a bit, and the world may be the worst offender. The Different Smart is my favorite human scale chair. I like almost everything about it. It does have the same recline as the world, so that would be the one thing I don't love, but I think the chair is really comfortable overall, and it doesn't have the big noise issue that kind of plagues the world chair. I found the Smart to be the quietest human scale chair. It has a similar backrest design to the world with its tri-panel mesh and large natural curve. It also features an independent wiggle like we saw on the world chair. This is actually one of my favorite backrest designs out of all the chairs that I've used. I don't mind that it doesn't have an added lumbar support system, I find it to be plenty supportive without it. I also really like the seat. It reminds me of a Steelcase Leap seat. It is thinly padded, but the foam quality is good and it feels supportive. The seat is very forgiving with its large design and no hard edges, and I also like that it has a little bit of flexibility. The armrest design is my one major gripe with the chair and is the reason I chose to move away from it. The bummer is that it has nothing to do with the armrest adjustability or arm pad comfort. I think they're both fine. The three-way adjustment is adequate and the pads are certainly comfortable enough to use for long hours. My issue is the way that the arms connect to the chair frame. There is a big vertical metal piece where the armrest meets the frame on the back. This is perfectly positioned to destroy my funny bone. I cannot express to you how many times I've banged my elbows on this metal piece. It seems like such a minuscule thing, but it puts me in this mindset of constantly worrying about bashing my funny bone, which makes me completely unproductive. I think the Liberty is the best looking chair from human skill. The Liberty is the perfect example of a high-end, minimalist design with a very clean look. The Liberty is very similar to the different chairs. Well, I guess it's the other way around since the Liberty came first, but you get that tri-panel backrest design with good quality mesh and a nice curve to offer you that proper lumbar support. One thing I like about the Liberty back compared to the different chairs is that it's a bit taller, so it offers more support for your upper back and shoulders. 
I also really like the seat. It's very similar to the seat on the smart chair. Overall, a really solid design and should be comfortable for most people. It's spacious, has high-end padding, provides a firm sitting experience that I find to be comfortable for long hours. The arms on the Liberty are the one area where I think human skill missed the mark a bit. They have similar arm pads to the different chairs. I don't mind them. I think they're comfortable enough. My problem is the adjustments or the lack of adjustments that you get. This is a high-end task chair that sells for over $1,000, and you only get arm height adjustment. I find this to be so strange when HumanScale has multiple other chairs with adjustable arm caps. If the Liberty had adjustable arm pads, like the different chairs or the Freedom, I would probably be able to use this as my daily driver, but the arms are a bit too wide for my preference, and they just don't go back far enough for me to scoot my chair all the way up to my desk. This is why I always recommend the Liberty as a good conference room chair. It is a comfortable chair that looks amazing. It just lacks the adjustments to fine tune a chair to the type of tasking that I like to do. The Freedom is Human Scale's flagship chair. It's the most expensive chair in their lineup and also has the most unique design. The biggest issue with the Freedom is how polarizing it is. Even more so than the Aeron chair, people either love the Freedom or they hate it. Unfortunately, I fall into the latter camp, which is disappointing because it's a really cool design concept. It follows the same logic as the previous three human scale chairs with their mechanism free design, but this is the only option from human scale with a padded backrest and headrest. I think the backrest is comfortable. It has a nice curve, the padding feels good, and the height adjustment allows me to perfectly place the curve in my lower back. I also think the headrest is comfortable. It is basically just a smaller version of the backrest. While I really like the headrest itself, I hate the way it functions when you recline in the chair. Most headrests will move in tandem with the backrest. The Freedom headrest is designed to hold more of an upright position for your head. The idea is that your eyes remain at the same level as your screen when you recline, allowing you to task while still being in that fully reclined mode. While the concept sounds amazing, it wasn't practical for me. I found it to be uncomfortable to fully recline, and I also didn't love using the chair fully upright. The headrest just doesn't function well with my sitting preferences. I would consider the arms to be okay on the Freedom, similar to the other chairs that we've looked at from human scale. I understand that they want things to be easy and more minimalistic, but I think the arms could benefit from at least one additional adjustment. They only have width and height adjustment, but I wouldn't consider either of them to be great. The width adjustment is pretty limited and leaves you with wide arms compared to most chairs. I would like the arms to come in a little bit closer to me when using the chair, and I can't do that. I also don't like how the armrest height adjustment moves at the same time. I think the range is amazing, but I like to use my arms at different heights, and I can't do that with the Freedom Chair. While the recline and arms are specific to my preferences, there is one thing that has made the people in our office stay away from the Freedom Chair as a whole, and that is how loud it is. The chair is really loud and makes a lot of noise when reclining, which can be a problem in an office. especially for a chair that is meant to be reclined most of the time. If you're looking for more high-end chairs, check out this Herman Miller lineup. 